We are now moving on to the functions section of this chapter four and five. And the first thing we want to look at today is set notation and sets of numbers. Press the space bar or click the mouse when you're ready to proceed to the next slide. Today we're going to talk about sets and set notation and type sets of numbers we use in mathematics. Okay, let's just read through the notes. Um, I'm going to start up here. All right. A set, of, a set is a collection of objects or elements, so it's a collection of things. So number of boys in the year 11 methods class is a set. All right, we use the curly brackets when we refer to a set. We use a capital letter to refer to a particular set if we want to name a set. For example, if you see here, we've got A is the set of numbers which contain one, two, three, and four only. So when we write the numbers separated by commas, like we have here, that means they're the only numbers that belong in that set. So the set A contains the numbers one, two, three, and four. So we we'll continue reading here. So this two is a part of the set. We write this as two, and this funny looking E, this stands for is an element of. So it is said two is an element of set A. Similarly, five is not an element of set A. Five doesn't belong in that set. If you go back here and look at the original um, set, five's not a part of it. So we say five does not belong to set A, and we then we use the symbol, the element symbol, with a slash through it, saying it's not equal to, or not an element of. If we say set B has the elements two and three, we say these numbers are a part of set A also, because two and three belong in both. You can see here, two and three belongs in set B, but also belong up here in set A. We can say B is a subset of A, that is, B is inside A. B is contained in A and is written as the symbol here, B is a subset of A. All right, next dot point. The intersection of two sets is used. This symbol here represents this, the intersection. You need to learn this. So if we've written C intersection D like that, we say this is a set of elements that have are found in both a C and D, both. Right, that's the key thing there. Uh, it belongs, these elements belong in C, also belong in D. If there are no elements in common, then the set, sets are said to be disjoint. Um, there is another term we use here. We write this as the intersection of C and D equals the null set. That's a, there's a special set called the empty set or the null set. Um, there's a couple of terms. We might just write them in here. A couple of terms we use around here. So instead of the empty set, we've also got the, the null, N-U-L-L, set. improve my e. the null set and another word there's another phrase we use um, for disjoint we often use this phrase we say they are mutually mutually which means um, or sorry the phrase is mutually exclusive which basically means that they have nothing in common. Mutually exclusive. Mutually meaning what's together. Exclusive means they're not together. So disjoint or mutually exclusive. And we describe this as the null set. Um, next up point, the union. All right, so we use the upside down, or we use the, it's the opposite symbol to the intersection, which is the upside down U. The union looks like a U, U for union. So if we say the union of two sets written as E, U, F, this is the set of elements found in either E or F. This does not exclude elements found in both. We write these elements only once. Okay, and this last thing here, this symbol here is called the universal set, which all other sets come from. Now, depending on the context of the question or the problem, 
depends how big that universal set is. Okay, we'll proceed to the next slide now. Mathematicians are more interested in the sets of numbers and particular numbers we use. So let's read through this and we'll fill in the table. The numbers we use every day are known as the real numbers. However, we can break these down into subsets. So the real numbers can contain smaller sets. The real numbers are, so we use the symbol R to represent all the real numbers, is any number that can be shown on a number line. The natural numbers, sometimes people refer to these as our counting numbers. These are the first sort of numbers most people learn. Uh, one, two, three, four. Usually by the time you're four years old, you can probably count up to 10 using your fingers and, and knowing the names, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. They're our counting numbers, but mathematicians refer to them as the natural numbers and they have the symbol N. Um, during early high school, you would have learned about the integers, which had the symbol Z. This refers to whole numbers. So our integers are our whole numbers, but they include the negative whole numbers and zero. So you can see here, this set here goes, keeps going down to negative infinity by counting in ones and goes up to positive infinity counting ones. We could split these two into two sets, Z plus and Z minus. Note, um, zero is neither negative nor, or, nor positive. So um, just keep that in mind. So Z plus doesn't include zero, Z minus doesn't include zero. Um, but Z contains Z plus, Z minus and zero. Now the rational numbers, we generally meet rational numbers before we meet integers in life. In probably primary school, you learn about the rational numbers and basically our fractions. As any number can be written as a fraction, that is in the form of A over B, where A and B are whole numbers or integers. So um, it can't be equal to zero. Now B can't be equal to zero because you'd be dividing by zero. But here's an example of some rational numbers. Two is a rational number, negative five is rational numbers because they can be written as a fraction. Two could be written as two on one, negative five could be written as negative five on one, five sevenths is a rational numbers. Then our last set of numbers, the irrational numbers, which we've met along the way in our mathematics journey. This has the symbol Q dashed. The dash is, you sort of read this as, that's the rationals, not. Um, whereas Q is the rationals. These are the opposite to the rational numbers. The things belonging this set are our thirds, like root two, root three, a combination of thirds and a whole numbers. Root three plus seven is irrational. Pi is another number that's irrational, can't be written as a fraction, even though there's been some good attempts over the years. All right. Next thing, which is probably the most important thing in this topic of sets, is to learn about the interval notation. Okay, mathematicians have three ways of describing numbers. There's the set notation, which uses our inequalities, less thans and equal twos and greater thans and equal twos. Um, we've got the interval notation, which uses a combination of square and round brackets and generally it's the easiest to use and we can demonstrate these on a diagram like a number line. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is look at several different examples and explain how they're describing the same thing. Once again, the diagrams I draw here are probably gonna look pretty rough and ready, but um, the next slide has the nice neat diagrams for you. All right. So if we look at this first set notation here, it says X, we read this, this is the set of X numbers, such that, that's what the colon represents, negative two is less than X is less than three. Now in set notation, we use this format when we have X sitting between two numbers, we always use less than symbols, all right? or less than or equal to symbols to represent that X is between two numbers. So here this is saying the value of X is a number between negative two and positive three. The equivalent interval notation is we say negative two comma two, negative two comma three, sorry, 
in round brackets. Now the round brackets are indicating that it's not equal to three and not equal to two as the inequalities show here. We've got to be very careful about this interval notation like this because it could be confused with a coordinate on the Cartesian plane. Anyhow, on a number line, this is what this is representing. So I'm going to draw a number line. Probably correctly, we probably should label the number line X. Yeah. Usually for a number line, the best thing is to mark in zero somewhere. Don't put a scale on because it takes too long. So this one here is minus two. This one here is three. They're the key numbers I need for this set or this interval. And how we draw our number line is like this. We start off with an open circle at two. We continuous line until we get to three and we put an open circle there. Then you make a decision. Should this circle here be coloured in or left open? If it's left open means it's not equal to, and if it's coloured in means it is equal to. From our set here, we can see that it's not an equal to sign here. It's not less than or equal to, it's just less than. And we've got round brackets in the interval notation. All right, um, I've gone outside the lines a little bit there. So the next one I might come in here. So if we draw our number line for the next one, talking about X, so I'll label this. I'll put my zero in. I'll put the number up here, so I don't go to the next box. Now the two key numbers once again are negative two and positive three. All right, I'll change the color. This time it says include negative two and include positive three because it's got the E equal to, it says less than or equal to. You'll note with the interval notation, now we use the square brackets to indicate that it's equal to. So if I was drawing this on a number line, I'd have an open circle starting at two and go to three, open circle. But because they're equal to, we now color these circles in. And that's the diagram that represents that interval notation or that set. All right, the next ones you can see we're not equal to negative two, but equal to three. So on the interval notation, we use a round bracket at the where it's not equal to and equal to three. So this is every number that's bigger than negative two up to and including positive three. So on a number line, we would end up with something like this. I would wait till the next slide to put these into your notes. So we've got zero, we've got negative two again, and positive three here somewhere. We're only sketching, so we don't put a scale on. So it's an open circle at two, goes all the way through to three, open circle, and we have to color that open circle in because it's equal to three. All right, I'm going to skip the next one. You can see on the next slide, but we're going to have a closed circle at negative two and an open circle of three. So it'll be that arrangement. All right, the next one here, we've got, it says X is greater than negative two. In interval notation, it says round bracket at negative two because it's not equal to it. It's, um, you can see it's just greater than negative two and any number greater than negative two will go up to infinity. So if we're drawing the number line on this one here, if we put um, negative two there, and therefore it's an open circle two because it's not equal to it, and it's any number bigger than it, that keeps going forever. So we just start a line and we put an arrow going out to uh, indicating it's going to keep going up to positive infinity. The next one says the only difference between this set says what's the set of x values where x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So now we include negative 2. So on the same number line here we'd have this arrangement. So 0, uh, negative 2, but because it's equal to negative 2 we now colour that circle in. All right, this next interval says X is less than three. So we would 
to have an open circle at three on our number line and it's less than so it's all the values to the left of it look like that once again I'm not drawing the whole diagrams you can see those in the next slide the next one here the only difference here now x is less than or equal to three so at three we'd have a circle but be colored in and be to the left less than that's still be the value three like it is here all right this one has got two sets one set says less than or equal to negative two and another set greater than three so we're going to and they're not joined they don't overlap so we're going to have one here where negative two is and it's equal to negative two so color in and it's to the left of that because it's less than negative two then there's going to be a gap and then at three it's going to be an open circle at three and it's going to be the values greater than it which is that now because of space and how well it looks there better off going straight onto the next slide and have a look at these how they should look nice and neat so in your notes you you need to fill in the diagrams like this use a ruler use a second color to um, color in the right inequality so there's the first one we compared that to what I drew that looks a thousand times percent better and that last one where we've got the the two sets that don't overlap they're actually disjointed okay or mutually exclusive they don't have anything in common these two separate sets but we're asked for the union of these so they both they both um, occur on this same number line okay the only thing missing of these number lines they really should have an X written at the end of each one because we're talking about X is the is the set name is X so we're talking about X values here all right we'll stop there okay as a follow-on from the previous slide here we're going to talk about the interval notation so when we use the round bracket it's when we see a less than or greater than symbol and this means that's the only word missing there means does not include the value more but the end value would be better to say very hard to write with this mouse okay if we use a square bracket means the symbol we're thinking about is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to or greater than or equal to so once again it means include the value okay um, on a number line we use an open circle we use that when it's a greater than or less than symbol it means does not include and a closed circle is used when you're less than or equal to or greater than equals and does not include and does include the value does whereas up here this does not include the value some special notations sometimes we use these because they're shortcuts and quicker if we use the symbol r plus okay that's the same as the interval of zero to infinity okay r plus doesn't include zero so it's a round bracket at zero um, in set notation we could say this is x greater than zero or on a number line we'd have our number line like this here's where zero is and we'd have an open circle and an arrow going out to the right like this so remember r plus doesn't include the value zero r minus is almost the opposite of this but this time we're going down a negative infinity so when we write the interval notation we should write the most negative number first so negative infinity to zero but not including zero so this is the same as saying x is less than zero or oh sorry about that I think I'll rub that out um, go back to the pen that's better and so on our number line here so probably should put x on that one there x here 
zeros here and it's less than zero so open circle anything to the left so that's how we draw the number line there if we have this next one here r plus union zero means with this set up above here include zero as well so now the set notation the interval notation sorry would be zero to positive infinity because it's r plus or we'd say this is x greater than or equal to zero and on our number line we would be coloring in the circle and going out to the right so our number line here would be that's where zero is, this is x all right and this is a special set which comes up in our hyperbolas and our truncus it says it's all real numbers excluding zero so this is a nice way quicker way than writing say an interval notation we'd have to say it goes from negative infinity up to zero but not including zero and then we'd be going from zero to positive infinity so obviously writing this here is a lot quicker than writing the interval notation on a number line that's going to look something like this this is x zero being a key number here so i'll just use a different color here so what we do is we do an open circle at zero because it's not equal to zero but it's every value to the right and every value to the left okay the last bit here about set difference um, we can see it says the notation is a backslash b it means start with set a and take away the elements that belong in b that are that belong in a it means the set of elements that are not elements of b so it's a slash b you'd say look at a and anything in b that can be taken out so if you look here three and seven belong in b so we've got to remove those that backslash basically indicates to us to remove so look at set a then remove anything that comes from b three and seven come from b so this here i'm going to be left with the numbers a take away what b has it's in common that's a curly bracket and i'm just left with one and two we now say start with b and take away the elements of a so the elements of a that are common are three and seven we just saw that so if i took them away i'd be left with four five and six nice looking six once again the next slide has a better version of this so let's go to the next slide and see that so you can see much neater diagrams and what you need to include into your notes we'll stop there then you can proceed to the next slide.